there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. So today we're going to be continuing with the Marianas campaign, so we'll get into that just in a moment here. Now we did see the Combined Fleet, the might of the Combined Fleet, show itself last, uh, last turn, which was rather... Interesting, I suppose you could say. I mean, we're lucky... Well, we weren't looking the fan, but obviously it, it did uh, hit some of our own destroyers. Uh, luckily, none of them sank in that same turn, so it's going to be a continuous problem for him, so it is going to be interesting. But uh, it has given us that full warning to be able to prepare ourselves. Had we not known about that and had they been a day closer, uh, things could have been worse. We may take losses. And I think we have to be fully prepared for that, but we can still win the, uh, we can still win. We do definitely have the material superiority. If they head close enough to you, and we'll talk, we may be able to see some heavy bomber, uh, attacks against them. Very much, well, very much depends on how able they're, um, uh, yeah, how capable they are of such a notion. I've sent them at 15,000 feet, I don't want to have them too low, they are pretty durable, but the thing is I'm, I'm worried about how much they may take from AA, but we'll see. First time attempted anything like this with heavy bombers. Or say I'm a Japanese player, so <laughs> uh, forgive me if we make terrible mistakes here. I've seen that the B-17s are quite useful against uh, in naval strikes at 10,000 feet. So I think 15,000 feet, as we're at a later stage of the war here, probably is a good, good mix, I suppose. Right, okay, so we do see an actual Japanese task force over here, events. we do see the Yahagi. Is this a Japanese... Um, Heavy cruiser, I wonder. It might be a light cruiser. It looks like potentially a heavy cruiser. So, Allied and Japanese task forces maneuver. We do have uh, five destroyers over here, but nighttime service combat. Interesting. Omi crosses the T. Right. It is a Takao right. Okay. Now, she does actually open up and strikes a hit. See, this is it. I suppose it was very good torpedoes out of the water here. I don't know how our forces will actually do. This is definitely not the early war. We do have a technological edge here. We are now gunned, but we'll see how this goes. Range closer to 6,000 yards. Let's see what they can do here. Then torpedoes out. The Nicholas is a flame, so she's going to be easier to be spotted here. But the, uh, the... I mean, this is knife fighting range here. This is knife fighting range. Torpedoes out once again. Mizuki. If we could actually land, yep, 4,000 yards, definitely. <laughs> this is touching nose to nose here. If we could land a torpedo into the sides of the light cruiser and heavy cruiser, that would be exceptional. Okay, torpedoes out into the water. Hiccups is firing again. So far, Nicholas is the only one taking any real hits in the moment. Torpedoes out once again. Torpedoes. Come on, guys. More torpedoes here. Hmm. 3,000 yards. This is getting very, very close. I mean, uh, <laughs> you would not want to be 3,000 yards away from a heavy cruiser. The Japanese heavy cruisers are pretty damn good. Okay, so we did actually hit the Yuzuki. Turn on explosion there. That's going to leave a mark. And once again, there, 5 inch shell. I think it's pretty much going to come down to if we can actually land a torpedo strike. I don't know what our torpedo munition is going to be looking like at the moment, but ideal is still good. Okay, we do hit the Azuki once again. Torpedoes out once more. She's definitely a flame here. I'm hoping that our radar would be making a big difference here, but when it gets 3,000 yards, I imagine we'd be able to see each other. 6,000 yards, so the range has increased and rather than decreased. Yeah, but the cow, the heavy guns of the cow are going to make a big difference, however. So far, not so bad. I mean, Nicholas has taken a hit, but we might be able to come back from that. It did look to be a superstructure hit. Well, the Azuki, uh, she had an eternal explosion there. Right, ranges up to 8,000 yards. Azuki hit once again there, fire the superstructure. Torpedoes out once again. Yanagi opening fire. Twelve thousand yards, okay. The thing is, the Takao is going to be deadly at all ranges. Torpedoes once more. I mean this is actually very, very interesting. Had this been in the daytime, we probably would have been at a uh, massive disadvantage, but here at night and obviously with the destroyers were able to be quite maneuverable. We do have the advantage of technology as well. 
I'd imagine... I don't know, actually. The Japanese may not actually have uh, radar. I'm not entirely certain at this point in time, really. At least on these ships. That's what I mean. Hmm. 13,000 yards. The good news is this is uh, potentially going to exhaust the munitions of the Yahagi and the Takao. Ryazuki hit once again. Superstructure hit, however. Right, range is closing once again to 11,000 yards. The thing is, we do have all... Uh, I imagine all the destroyers here are of the same Fletcher class, so we do have a unity that that actually brings there. The uh, opposing force there is meant for the light cruiser Yahagi, the Takao, and obviously we've seen the Inagi and Uzeki. I do not... I. They look to be potentially the same class, but it's hard to make out here. Uh, the Suga are definitely not. Right, we do take a hit on the Healy. Fire on the main deck. We do hit the Yahagi, though. Only a small hit. I don't imagine a 5-inch shell's going to do too much in the way of that. The light cruisers of the Japanese aren't that well armored. Though, of course, it does depend on what class she is. And a torpedo hits the Nicholas there, so the Nicholas is not going to be making out of this battle here. Yep, definitely not making it out. She's been hit by the 200mm guns of the uh, Takao. So, unfortunately, we are, we are going to be certain of a loss here. But it's actually quite rare that we even have surface action, so this is very interesting. It looks like the Japanese main body might be heading further south, though. Yep, the Nicholas has gone down there. Range increases to 11,000 yards. Decreases, I should say. Inag is hit. Suga so far not taking a single hit. I mean, Healy's been hit. Closer to 10,000 yards. Inagi hit, very nice. Upper works. Fire control system damaged, so her accuracy is going to suffer as a result of that. Mizuki hit once again. Range now to 6,000 yards. I'm hoping that we have some destroyers. Well, sorry, I'm hoping that some of our destroyers have torpedoes, but I don't think we will do. Well, no, torpedoes out. I mean, a hit of a cow would be amazing, but unfortunately, it doesn't seem like that's going to happen here. Mizuki here once more. Severe damage to the electricals. Right. So I'm going to speed things up here. We'll see what the results are at the end of the battle. I'd imagine we'll probably lose maybe additional ships. More than likely Healy. The battle goes on for some time there. So, let's see here then. The Nicholas is hit three times and she does go down. Uh, Azuki, she's hit eight times. Heavy fires, heavy damage. So she's more than likely... Well, she's not going to be in a very great state. Silgar gets out of that without a single hit. Uh, Harrison, he well, Harrison, Hickox, and Newcomb, uh, they actually do come out of that very well there. Healy's hit once, but not so bad. Now, we don't light any fires aboard the light cruiser and heavy cruiser, so that is a shame. So this is 121.92. Interesting. So that's about here, then. So that is near the carriers, then. Okay, so we do have four... Now, I wonder what we have here. Allied and Japanese Task Forces maneuver, then. I think it was definitely worth our space off for destroyers here. Nighttime service combat. He definitely wanted to try and, uh, well, catch our CVEs. Right. Fire from the lead ship. Factor immediately being hit there. So we do see the Yahagi, but we don't see the Takao, which is interesting. Torpedoes out. Yeah, Thatcher being hit quite hard there. 
we do see the Suga and a Damage Destroyer. We may be able to get the better of them here. We do have five to free. It's unfortunate that the uh, Fetch was damaged in the opening stages of the battle. The uh, range here is 7,000 yards now. Come on, we just need those torpedoes. Right, Suka's been hit there. Fires on the main deck, that's what we need there. Torpedoes out. Bannon opening fire. Receiving fire from Yahagi. Yeah, no, Bannon's hit there. The Yahagi's really showing her value at the moment. She's not going to have a huge amount of ammunition, though. The last battle was quite a lengthy one. Right, Yahagi. Right, okay. We actually do hit, uh, destroy the death charges there. That's interesting, man. It's a little bit of damage. She's now a flame. The fact that she's now a flame does make her significantly easier to spot in the darkness. And she's going to be an easier target for aircraft as well due to that. So that's very good news there. Okay, he's been ordered. Yep. The Japanese Task Force commander is attempting to disengage here. All three ships of his are aflame. We do see the Yanagi here. 13,000 yards. Hmm. So we haven't been able to inflict a crippling blow against the Japanese task force, but we have given them a good fight. Yeah, task forces break off. Now, Thatcher and O'Bannon, let's see. So one shell hit, two shell hits on fire. Uh, well, it looks like Yahaga was able to put those fires out, Suga was able to put those fires out, potentially so, but not too bad there. So it looks like he sprinted over this way. I do wonder if that's the surface ships. Uh, we do see Japanese ships over here, then. We do have our carriers assembling. I suppose it was a good new, uh, good idea to actually have our forces head over this way. In okay, case so we have Yahagi over here once again. Uh, I'm going to imagine this is the same destroyer task force, actually. We're looking to maneuver here. 12,000 yards. Crossing the T. Yeah, Omi responds with fire from lead ships. Now, I do not imagine they're going to have much of the way of ammunition. Not like we will either, but we do... Well, we did begin the last battle fresh. They did not. They're still a flame match, which is very good news. So is uh, Thatcher and O'Bannon. Well, this is it. 7,000 yards. And the Yahagi, I do not imagine she's going to have much in the way of armor there. So we only have the 5 inch guns, uh, but we should be able to really inflict some critical damage. Torpedoes out once again. It'd be amazing to see them actually moving out here. That'd be beautiful. Right, 11,000 yards. What I'm going to do here then is speed things up. So we do have a lot to get through in this turn. Okay, the task forces break off. Uh, no additional damage inflicted. So an exchange of gunfire, really. Okay. Now, they shouldn't be headed to Inuil Talk. Oh, we've drawn to Inuil Talk after combat. And here we are once again, then. <laughs> allied radar detects Japanese. Spots Allied Task Force there. Locates Allied Task Force. Sorry, Japanese Task Force. Maneuvering for position. Interesting. Uh, so what we're going to do here, then, speed things up. Yeah, looks like a banner was hit there. Yeah, lots of hits here. Yanagi hit once, O'Bannon hit again, Owen hit. So lots of fires here. The Yahagi really showing how much how much uh, of a difference it does make to actually have that firepower. And encountering once again. My god. They're definitely making their way north. I don't imagine she's going to have really ammunition once she does arrive at her intended target destination. But the Yanagi goes down there. Yep, yeah, Yahagi. We actually come out of that with no additional hits there. Looks like they are definitely running low on ammunition. Yahagi hit once. Uh, Yanagi is sunk. Suga, she doesn't like she's too far away from that fate either. Yeah, I mean, this is it. Allies radar detects Japanese task force at 26,000 yards. So the thing is, it's much easier for us to be able to uh, track him down. He's going to find it very difficult to escape, if at all, really. 
Yeah, so good idea moving our forces over here. Right, RO44 opening up on the Thatcher. I mean, this is it. She's burning at night, but she's still a destroyer, so she's still able to maneuver. But you would not want to be aboard a burning ship at night. You're basically a beacon saying, uh, hit me. And it'll be interesting to see what happens potentially over the rest of the night here or potentially into the daytime. Yeah. Ideally, we should be able to deal with them with our own aircraft. We will have a lot of aircraft nearby here. These will be our destroyers or CVs, air night strikes. Right, okay, so we do see some J1M1s. These are our attacking the destroyers over here. No dice, but they received damage there. Yeah, only 60 kilogram bombs, but they're still 60 kilogram bombs. Once again. Coney. And again, they received damage from the AA. Not enough to shoot them down, but enough to actually cause them issues. Right, yeah, temporary flotation damage there. Okay, I-185, so she has spotted the uh, Stevens and Sproston, I think it was. Oh no, she's been spotted, that's it. Yeah, caused a little bit of damage here, very nice. Taking on water, very good man. It is going to be interesting. I do like Mage's play here. He, uh, it looks like he did leave some surface ships there. He had some surface ships head on their head, which makes sense. Um, but the thing is, well, I mean, it makes sense. Obviously, he was looking to strike our logistical elements, but it's one of these things he has to get to them, really. Okay, we'll speed up results here and see how we did. Right, we do abandon. But we do land 8 hits there, 185. The severity of those hits, I'm not entirely sure, but I don't imagine she's liking those hits nonetheless. Right, so we're unloading again up again. Obviously, this is just the LSTs, just moving the supply ball, uh, well, ashore. But it's still handy just to have a little bit there. Ooh, it looks like a 75mm gun did fire back there. It's not often you actually get to see the caliber there. Yep, the 75mm infantry gun battery firing at the LCI. Uh, 584 there. Patterson knows sort of engaging mode, which is interesting. Okay. Are we to move into the daytime? Into the daytime. Now this is where things get very interesting. But we didn't see a nighttime strike, so that's interesting. Our carriers may be about this position by now. Loaded up again. I love seeing those LSTs, they are so impressive. Seven course of guns fired in defense. I don't imagine there's much ammunition aboard those ships. But then again, just any sort of bombardment does help us out. Right, reacting, reacting. Encounters enemy task force. Ooh, you son of a bitch. Okay, so we do have our LSTs. We we may have some of our forces hit here. Uh, daytime. Hmm, yeah, patrol boats. Not really good. At least we do have the destroyed minesweepers. We have a decent amount of destroyers here. It's just not good to have any LSTs in the firing line. Surprised uh, about the actual surface combatants. Obviously, the bombardment force isn't uh, responding to this. They may have missed them in, during the night, actually. But it looks so far, so far, so good. I mean, it's the fact that obviously the range is closing. Yeah, the LST there has collided with the APA. That's the issue there. That's why it's going to cause damage by these collisions. But the thing is, we are up again, so once the island does fall, I'll be able to look after them. Never good boat, so I did look and put an end to this quickly. If the patrol boats are taking damage, one of them goes down. 7,000 yards. Yeah. Ralph Talbot opening up. And Kiyo Maru goes down. All of uh, Allied Task Force underway. There we go. So the most dangerous time has passed. Ideally, we don't see any further collisions. Yeah, Tama Maru. Range increases to 12,000 yards. The good news is this didn't happen on the first day that we landed, otherwise that could have caused a lot of problems. 
but he's trying to disrupt us in any way he can here at the moment. So I imagine these guys are coming from Iwo Jima, actually. That makes sense. 14,000, 11,000 yards. They're both are flying. God damn it. With the Zylin again. Zylin. That's not what I want there. I mean, the fact is, he's going to call this a success. Uh, due to the fact that he's caused damage to the LSTs. Yeah, not... Not fantastic. But they both go down there. All of them are dead. It's just a shame, though, because we do have damage inflicted to our ships. Very long. Yeah, shell hit there. So there will be damage here. There will be damage. Yeah, screen from combat. We'll have to go through that and actually see the results afterwards. Uh, but at least we do put the raid down there. Surprising that the actual surface uh, assets over here didn't pick up on that. It might be worthwhile having a few destroyer patrols just on surface combat just to protect against that sort of thing. G3 shot down there. Jake shot down. Right, he may very well hit a new talk. We are seeing allied, uh, sorry, carrier aircraft over there. Well, we're spotting aircraft in the area. Or we're being spotted by, I should say. Hmm. Looks like the carriers are now in position. He may move the carriers out elsewhere, but we'll see. He may come back around over here, but we'll see about that. Ideally, we can pick him up and figure out where he is. But if I can take Pagan, all I need is Pagan. Once I take Pagan, then I can get a lot of our forces out to the, uh, out to the danger there. The enemy carriers have been spotted. Are they? Is that them by, uh, Ponape? Right, so we find it very hard to link up due to the weather, but we are approaching. Oh, wow. So we have 56 F1, F4U, one course there's 12 SPD-5 Dauntlesses engaging against a Armada of Zeros. But this is very interesting where it's going south. I mean, we may very well see the actual heavy bombers uh, indeed launch strikes. I mean, you can see that a lot of them were unable to link up there, unfortunately. So the weather's not exactly great here. But, I mean, this might be able to blunt the blow he might be able to actually inflict against us somewhat, but it's interesting that he's going this route here. Guns jamming. But, I mean, 56 Corsairs is no small amount either. I think they're flying about 20,000 feet. A6 and 5 damage, diving to the deck. Yeah, the firepower of the Corsair, I do believe that the Corsair is armoured, well as the A6M5 is not, not the most manoeuvrable, but the firepower does make a difference. I mean, the interesting thing is, will the SPD-5s actually get through here? Okay, what I'm going to do here then, uh, speed things up and we'll see how things go. So we do see our numbers drop in here. Lots and lots of enemy zeros here. Yeah, the Dauntlesses are all shot down. Uh, so unfortunately, we do not make it through there with a strike, but we do shoot down at least eight A6s and fives. We actually do not lose a single Corsair. But it's interesting to know about that over here. Okay, so, wow. Uh, three B-24 Liberators against uh, 60 zeros. They're turning away, though, so let's see how they do, actually. This is going to be rather interesting. It's not going to do wonders for his combat air patrols, because they're going to be very tired, and the defensive fire may cause him a lot of problems. We'll have to see how this goes. I'm going to be rather interested. Yeah, well, that's not really good. Critical hit there. One down. Oh, we actually do make it through with the Liberators. Let's see, what do we have? We have Zuiho! We do have one shot down by the Flak. One damage by Flak. God damn! But we did actually make it through there. Very interesting. Who knows, maybe we might be able to make it through with the others, but we do lose two of them, one of them is damaged, but we did find the Zuiho. Right, two more making it through here. I'm going to be very interested to see what happens here. One of them shot down, and everyone makes it through. The Taiho! Oh, but we had destroyed by Black, but we have discovered Taiho. But the thing is, we do have plenty of these guys. It is going to, it is costing me VP, but um, it's not nice for him. He's com well, his combat air patrol's taken a beating. 
So that's very interesting. Had we had the Corsairs actually escorting the uh, Liberators, we probably would have been able to get through there. I mean, this is it. It's a very large bomber, so it looks like uh, 15,000 feet is too low. But we might go for about 20,000 feet and attempt it yet again. But we'll see here. Things are definitely heating up. Things are definitely heating up. We unfortunately lose a Catalina there. Right, unable to launch. Yeah, I found to link up. If we could get a bit large, a large raid. Okay, so we've got five of them. 67, 8, 6, and 5s. Yeah, I was hoping that we might have had uh, some calls there to join them, but we'll see. At least we do have a couple more. One shot down. Okay, only one of them makes it through here. Uh, we have the yun Yo, and she's destroyed by a flag. Yeah, this is it. So it looks like if we raise the altitude, we might have a better chance. But we are shooting down a couple of his uh, A6M5s. Right, okay, so we do have 31 SB2C Helldivers. Yep, the Yahagi is nailed by a thousand pound bomber. She ain't gonna be coming back from that. And yet again, a thousand pound of American freedom there into the deck. And again, three thousand pounds. Four thousand pounds. Five thousand pounds. Six. I think she's dead. Seven. The time, yep, there we go. The uh, time of Sewell is over. That's a thousand pound bomb into an escort. Two thousand. 3,000. <laughs> Yahagi once again. What are we up to? 8,000 or 9,000 now? But she's... Oh, there we go. I think we're at 10,000 now. Suga has gone down. Okay, so we had 9,000 pounds of bombs actually hit the Yahagi. I don't think she's going to come back from that. That puts an end to the Yahagi, I can imagine, without a single issue. Yeah, so it's interesting to see that with the Liberator's worth find it very difficult to actually link up. We do have something sick there. But overall, well, yeah, overall, not too bad. The thing is, we actually aren't able to look after ourselves over here. His raids don't find the targets. His carriers are detected. So the thing is, I could potentially head south and deal with the carriers. Or at least send one force to head south and deal with the carriers. Right, here we go. The attacker began. Let's see. I'm hoping that we can make it through here. I'm not expecting us to be able to take it, but I'm really, I'm really hoping that we might be able to. We'll see. Japanese don't give up. But maybe we might be able to uh, get the odds needed. We'll see what goes on here. 120, no, not as good. But we catch the gun! <laughs> the base has fallen. That's exactly before. Oh, wow. Oh my god. He only had. Jesus. So, 299 casualties here, then 1 destroyed, 22 disabled. Jesus, I cannot believe we take the base. I didn't think we'd take the base. 157, my god, that went well. Pagan has fallen. The 8th JNAF wiped out by attrition, my god. Now, with the fall of Pagan... That, gi that gives us a lot of work over here. My god, okay. So now we can actually begin to look at moving aircraft over here. I can shift the heavy bombers to begin, but more than likely. But that, that is really very good. So we now have a safe anchorage. It looks like the actual forces of... Uh, yeah, it looks like the uh, forces began are actually still there. But the base has fallen, so we do control it. So it looks like the Japanese are still in on the island, but... I don't know, it's interesting. Uh, so we'll have to deal with them, but the fact is we're in possession of the base, so therefore we can actually make use of it. Right, they're loading fuel. Right, so we do spot the actual enemy task force out there, the actual carriers. We can see the amount of submarines that we have out here. It is a very large amount. I mean, we did lose a few of our liberators. The vast majority didn't actually... Yeah, okay, so let's take a look over here then. So we lose 12 Dormuses, we lose 7 Liberators, 4 to air-to-air, 3 to flak. 
Uh, but he has lost 21 aces and fives today. Yep. Not a very good exchange rate, but the thing is I do have the Corsairs over here. Yeah, so perhaps uh, had we kept the Corsairs, uh, we might have been able to make use of them. I do have a Corsair unit over here. Hellcats over here. Uh, Corsairs over here. So the thing is, I do wonder why he's moving down here. He's moving southeast. That is very interesting. He might have been looking to actually pick up on the easy kills potentially down here. Or potentially... I don't know. Maybe he was trying to drop the detection. That's a potential possibility. But I mean, yeah. So we do see that, yeah, that there's still a good amount of Japanese here on the island. The port is completely knackered. The airfield is in a pretty bad state, but I can make use of it. I think the thing is now I could potentially rest. Uh, it's going to be, it's one of those really. Do we continue the uh, attacks against him? I do have the base, so we do have that for us. Um, it might be worthwhile just to actually stand down our forces this turn. So I think we'll stand them down. We do have these forces here, so if he does launch an attack against us, we do have uh, even more men who can defend against it. So I think what it is worthwhile doing then is not shocking, my god, no. Yeah, we'll have the men stand down this turn. Right, well, there we go. That's superb. Yeah, I did have these guys. I did have some destroyers on surface combat as well. The hell are the battleships? Yeah, what the hell are they? Oh, right, they're over here, aren't they? That makes sense, then. So I think what we'll potentially do here, then, is... We could have the carriers head south to attempt to tackle the Kidipatai. I think we came through the night well there. The fact that we actually took the base up again, though, gives me so much to work with. So, so very much. So over here up again, then, we have 106 aviation support. So I need to get this base up and running ASAP. The good news is I can do that. Yep, naval support's over here. Engineer vehicles. So what do we actually have at the base began then? So we have... Um, right, 61 engineers, 7 engineer vehicles. So not huge amounts of engineers, but still having them here is very good. So we do have our guys. Okay. It's done loads in a small amount of supply. Yeah, so you can see that these are the ships that did take some damage. Uh, not that much of air from this island, as Can be dealt with, can be dealt with. So what I'm going to do here then is actually disband these forces into the harbour. Be able to make use of that. Yeah, level 3 port will work nicely. I think it's either level 3 or level 4, but it's actually protected against uh, enemy submarines. Yeah, fair, fair task force, fair. Do have a couple of submarines over here as well. Okay. Now, the good news is I can get these forces, the actual command, into the base over here. Unload once you arrive. Okay. I'm going to have them head for Pagan as well. Also disband. Oops. Okay, very, very nice. So the good news is with that, uh, we can look again some aircraft over here to begin. Uh, we can look at really making the most of this now. Yep, they're heading to begin. So what I need now then... I just can't believe the amount of destroyers I have is ridiculous. 
line, you're gonna head into the port at uh, Paganba. Pagan's gonna be a massive, massive <laughs> semblance of force here. Right, so return to Pagan. Uh, I'd like you to automatically disband. The good news is, right, have them an absolute gather them into the port. The fact is I'm gonna have all the auxiliary repairs, the destroy tenders, the submarine tenders, uh, gunboat patrol tender, we do have the actual auxiliaries over here. Uh, we do have the actual ammunition tenders, tankers over here, fuel supply, only a little bit of fuel, but uh, a lot of supply moving into the actual base there. But the good news is I can make use of it. So, I don't know how long we have in this scenario left. I'm going to have to double check how long the scenario actually is. Yes, but very happy that we take the base. So now what I need to do then is defend it. The only issue is I might not be able to fly uh, any sorts of sorties or really anything much from the air base at the moment. Uh, but what I'll do then is obviously get aircraft there. The good news is I've got a hell of a lot of submarines over here. So what I could look towards doing then is having them blared in a defense. So he's moving southeast, which is interesting. We do have a decent amount of assets over here to actually pose him in, in the theater. It might be that I move the um, Liberators out. We'll see. Right. I think what I'm going to do then, move some Liberators out here to begin. Use them as a test bed. Obviously, they're going to have to concentrate on this first and foremost. Right. So I can handle a decent, decent amount over here. The good news is I could obviously use the uh, CV escorts to actually run patrols over this area, which is very good. Hmm. I mean, the thing is, I obviously use a lot of fuel over here. We do still have enough fuel, and if I'm returning, if I head south. Uh, towards the talk, at least I do have the ability to refuel there in the marshals, which is very good. If we take a look, uh, a newer talk there still has 93,600 units of fuel, so we do definitely have enough fuel to re well, yeah, to refuel. We dealt with those, so if we take a look, yeah, it looks like the Yahagi definitely went down. Ship sunk last turn. Uh, so we lose the Nicholas, unfortunately, to a torpedo. So that's a Fletcher. And the Fletchers are very nice. I mean, look at those. They've got a decent amount of 5 inch guns. They're a very good destroyer. Very nice destroyer. A big destroyer as well at 2,300 tons, I suppose you could say. But he loses the Yuzuki. Now, she's not worth a huge amount. She's only 6 points there, but it's a Mutsuki. So the Mutsuki is not very good. The Kamikaze is not, uh, not exactly excellent. Japanese destroyers here. The Momi. Yeah, former destroyer turned to an escort. Tosu. So these aren't worth it much, but the Yahagi went down. The interesting thing is I do not know where the actual heavy cruiser has gone, which is interesting. Very interesting. The good thing is, though, once we actually get our aircraft established over here at uh, Pagan, then, well, it gives us a lot in the way of options. I could then seriously look towards actually bombing the airfields over here. But just having heavy bombers on standby to actually support the landings would be very, very nice. It's going to do a lot for us. I think it is a worthwhile strategy to pursue to tank the gun and then go for the islands. Uh, so what I could potentially do now is use the... Well, this is it. We know the combined fleet is down here. So the combined fleet is about 20 hectares away from Saipan. They could potentially sprint a good way there. But the thing is, what I'm going to be doing then is using these submarines over here then to look towards a layered wall, really. He's going to have to get past the naval search out here in the Marsh Islands. It's not a good position. I mean, if we take a look over here then, we're looking at 9 hexes away. We're looking at about 14 hexes away. 
The thing is, if I raise the altitude of the heavy bombers on the naval strike, we might actually be able to run a good chance of just really uh, causing them a lot of problems. If I run 20,000 feet or 25,000 feet, maybe 20,000 feet could be quite good. It might be just a sheer mass of bombers, even if they don't land hit. See, the thing is, if we'd potentially come in with uh, more numbers or had an escort, we might have been able to get over the actual bombers and drop some bombs. I do not think he would have been very happy having about... Uh, was it uh, how how many bombs they carry? Yeah, by having five thousand pound of bombs dropped on him, <laughs> I don't think he'd be happy. I mean, they're tough aircraft. They have sixty durability, armored. Uh, it's just they have no maneuverability. The thing is, like, obviously, once they're well, they're being hit by big, well, fairly big Japanese air guns. Things the Japanese AA isn't very effective, but obviously if you're being hit, if you're hitting something the size of a little uh, you're probably going to hit. I mean, uh, desperate attempt there. But I mean, we do shoot down a uh, few of the actual A6 and 5s. The fact that we actually do not lose any of our Corsairs is rather interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Unfortunately, I do not have time to actually finish the turn off today. So what I'm going to do here then is leave this as something of a tease for you guys. Uh, when I do have the time to actually finish this turn of the week, I will definitely do so. But I do hope you guys have enjoyed it so far. Really, really getting very interesting these last few days here. Did not expect them to go south, but I suppose it does make sense. I mean, look at the amount of assets I was able to rally over here. Right, right okay, then return to replenish. God, I hate life. I don't know why they do this. They really need to stop doing that. So that could have caused me a lot of problems. Oh, there we go, 25. Okay, we'll take a look at the signal intelligence. Yeah, the thing is we're going to have to deal with the 29th Division at Guam. We're going to have to deal with Japanese divisions. I'm surprised I actually took the base from the Japanese, though. Didn't expect that, but the 8th JNAF is wiped out, which is very good. Buying the attrition there, which is very nice. So I can't imagine that they had any supplies, and yeah. Yeah, they must have no supplies. It might be worth continuing to attack just to wipe them out, really. I would suffer some disabled, but yeah. So they've lost 11 guns, 2 vehicles, and they had... Uh, 28 engineers, squads been destroyed, 4 non-combatant squads destroyed, 1 squad destroyed, 22 disabled. So we w oh, we are fighting, yeah, so the 8th is wiped out, so they still have the 18th and the 9th and the assassin both first, second, left. It might be just worth attacking them. But that was very good there, sort of odd 7 to 1. I didn't think they'd be so good, but then again, I suppose when they only have an adjusted defense of 17, it's still not enough. Yeah, terrain benefited them, disruption, preparation, experience, supply... They've been under bombardment pretty much day in, day out. They've been hit by aircraft. They've been, well, engaged in land warfare. It's a very small island after all. I mean, rough terrain is decent, but it's only... Oh, I can't go ahead and take a look at that. It's only times two. The jungle over here is, I think it's times three. It's either times two or times three, but still not going to be very good. Right, but the thing is we have what we needed here. We know where the combined fleet is. I imagine that the actual heavy elements are over here at truck. So what we might do then is actually head south with our own carriers. We've got the escort carriers to ensure the London's operational success. I can base heavy bombers out here. He's still got a large amount over here to Blilu. So he may have other tricks up his sleeve. That's what I want to find out. But the thing is once we, well... With Pagan, at least I do have a base there. Having a base in the area is just a massive boon. It gives me so much to work from. But until next time, thank you so very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I'll look to conclude the turn later on in this week. Until next time, thank you for watching and goodbye. I'll do subscribe for more and follow my Twitch channel on Twitch at XTRG. It really does make a difference. And if you do enjoy my content and you would like to support myself as a content creator, please do consider becoming a patron of mine. You could also uh, donate via PayPal. There are multiple different ways and there are multiple rewards available. All of this does actually help me out and is much appreciated. Thank you and goodbye.